Wayne, I want to be specific, though, because I don't know Julian Assange. He seems like he's done some good work, but I respect you. I respect uh, the, the John Young from uh, Cryptome, and I've seen a lot, most of what you've talked about, unfortunately, has come true. So I know you're a really good source, and, and, and I believe that, that you, know, you believe you have well-founded reasons to not trust them. But going back, are you specifically saying that this Julian Assange guy is a famous hacker involved in going after U.S. military computers in the 80s? Well, this is, this is the background of the WikiLeaks group. Uh, one of the principals with WikiLeaks has been associated with the Chaos Computer Club in Germany. Um, I, I think the fact is that uh, these people travel around the world. Uh, they say uh, there's government agents after them. Uh, though I, I, I think that there needs to be more transparency with this organization. Well, their, their comeback is, well, we have to be secretive because of the information and the people we're dealing with. Well, if this private manning is any indication of how they protect their sources, they're dismal failures because this guy's looking at years in prison because he was outed by one of these, uh, one of these people that was associated with WikiLeaks. That's not how... Uh, an investigative journalist deals with their sources. They go to great pains to protect their identities, and uh, so far their their, their track record uh, gets a big uh, fat F. What about the providence of these documents? Young pointed out they had digital signatures on them before, that they were actual physical documents, scans of those, and that this disgorgement of 92,000-plus documents uh, breaks with two things. They're entirely digital, A, uh, you know, they're, they're text. They're not copies of paper. A, uh, they're digital text. B, they didn't disgorge them to the public first, as they've always done. They went directly to powerhouse mainstream media establishment groups like the New York Times that helped lie about yellow cake and aluminum tubes in Iraq. Oh, absolutely. I think with the track record of the New York Times and the, uh, the, the, the track record with um, um, Der Spiegel on uh, Iran, uh, I think we have to be very skeptical. Now, uh, to be fair to WikiLeaks, they were uh, criticized before for uh, not uh, engaging the, 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 the media, the, jur the journalists, but uh, I, think, I think they went the other direction here by selectively uh, making this information available to some uh, 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 media sources that have shown themselves in the past not to be all that trustworthy. What does your gut tell you, Wayne? Well, my gut, my gut uh, tells me that this could be, even though the Obama White House is criticizing this quote-unquote leak as terrible, I think we have to look. Uh, there's a lot of uh, people uh, in, the, in the military who think that this uh, foray into Afghanistan is a lost cause that we ought to pull out. So uh, are they, uh, you know, uh, is the White House, uh, uh, you know, are they shedding crocodile tears over this or... Uh, do they see a, a long-range uh, opportunity to start to uh, convince the public that, look, uh, th this is such a failed policy, uh, maybe we need to think about some sort of withdrawal? Well, if that was the case, to interrupt, if that was the case, and hold that thought, then we would see that mirrored in the mainstream news. And we've suddenly seen a lot of big Republicans, uh, the Republican Party chairman, and many others saying Afghanistan is Obama's war, we need to get out of there, and we've been hearing the Pentagon say that. And so I think that adds a lot of validity to what you just said, Wayne. Right, and we, what do we have coming up? We have a, a big election coming up, and, and the Democrats are uh, being uh, seen as uh, possibly losing a number of seats in the Senate and the House. So this could be an effort at some sort of damage control. Uh, this could be what I call a controlled hemorrhage. Uh, leaking this information. The White House says, oh, this could put our troops in jeopardy. Well, you know, I mean, we already know it's a mess over there. How are they going to be in any more jeopardy when they release uh, the highest level secret, which with overclassification, that would at best be confidential or, or for official use only or unclassified in the past. Yeah, because Ellsberg's reports, those were the highest level government and, and think tank analysis from the big brain bugs that the war was a complete failure, not battlefield communiques. No, yeah, right. The Pentagon Papers came out of the Rand Corporation, which was basically writing policy in Vietnam and Indochina. So what we have here, uh, you know, what, what do we have? Emails, uh, 
uh, uh, cable traffic uh, between uh, diplomat, uh, U.S. diplomats and State Department. I mean, uh, uh, where's the where's the criticality here, except for the fact that uh, these documents all prove what we already knew that uh, there's a lot of dissension uh, in the ranks with this. Uh, uh, totally messed up policy uh, we have in Afghanistan. But that also gives validity that it's real and WikiLeaks is doing a good job because that's the type of thing they're going to be leaked is something that a captain or a colonel who's mad can put on a memory stick and give to them. So it's, uh, it's just a hall of mirrors. Uh, and as a security expert and internet expert, uh, give us your view on the future of the web. Well, I think the idea of uh, the president having the authority to throw a kill switch uh, should send uh, uh, shutters down everyone's spine. Uh, we have to look at the three uh, senators who proposed this, uh, who really shepherded this through the Senate. Uh, Joe Lieberman, and we don't have to say any more about him, but the, the other one, um, uh, Susan Collins from Maine, but the other one, Jay Rockefeller from West Virginia. And, uh, you know, I mean, that last name should tell everybody <laughs> who's behind this and what the motives are. Well, we know his quote, we would have been better off without ever inventing an Internet. And you got Lieberman saying, we don't want to censor the web, we just need the power that China has to control it. Well, and China have, 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 does effectively control the Internet. Uh, they have their own search engine called Baidu. They, did, they didn't like Google. Of course, now Google apparently has settled its problems with China. But, uh, but uh, many websites are blocked in China. Um, and uh, is that what Lieberman's referring to? He's, he's, he's uh, putting China up as a, some great uh, example for this country to follow. I mean, I can't believe the people of Connecticut can constantly keep putting this guy back in office. Uh, but we have to remember Connecticut is the home of the uh, Bush family. It's the home of William F. Buckley. Uh, and it's the home of uh, a number of uh, uh, Wall Street uh, uh, gangsters. Uh, so uh, should we expect anything less from the state of Connecticut? Probably not. Wayne, I want to bring up two other points with you. I, you probably didn't hear it, but last Friday, Rush Limbaugh came out and said there's a blue blood elite in New York and D.C. The banks are ripping us off. They want to destroy the middle class. And the Republicans are controlled by the same elite. He's always acted as a gatekeeper to deny that we have a corrupt oligarchy running things. He, he, he really went far uh, on Friday. Is that because if he doesn't do that and change with the times because the public's already waking up, uh, he won't be relevant? Or is there a fight within the establishment? What's your view on that? Well, I think he's trying to be like you, Alex. He probably sees your ratings and, uh, and his ratings, and he figures he's got to repackage himself and rebrand himself. Uh, uh, you know, if he really believes this, I say, you know, welcome to the real world, Rush uh, Limbaugh, but uh, let, let's see if he maintains the stance. Uh, it may change with time. Well, I tend to agree with you. Uh, lastly, really chilling news uh, here. Uh, Haritz reporting, uh, the Jerusalem Post, Associated Press, ex-CIA chief says strike on Iran seems more likely now, and that even if they don't get a nuke, they need to be attacked. Uh, this from Hayden, uh, amazing statements. It seems that the drums for war are really intensifying. Give us, give us your view uh, from being inside the beltway there, what the chatter is. Is this getting ready to be green-lighted? Well, of course, we have the Republicans in Congress uh, trying to get a, a resolution passed to support an Israeli attack on Iran. So absolutely there's a lot, of, a lot behind all this, this noise. I would point out that Michael Hayden is in business now with Michael Chertoff, uh, in the security consulting business, and uh, should we expect anything uh, less from him? Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think the drums are beating very loudly uh, for uh, war uh, on Iran. And uh, if that happens, uh, I think uh, we're looking at uh, you know a potential ca uh, catastrophe, of course. And the two minutes we've got left, uh, what type of catastrophe? Well, look, the first thing the Iranians will do, they're going to attack the Saudi oil fields. They're going to cl close the Strait of Hormuz. Uh, we've already got uh, Hugo Chavez in Venezuela saying if he's attacked from Colombia, which is the host of seven new U.S. military bases, courtesy of Obama, that he will cut off uh, oil to the United States. I think we're t talking about uh, something akin to the uh, oil blockade uh, of the 1970s, only probably 20 times worse.
And we now see the, the military priming the propaganda of saying that they think nuke components are being shipped from Venezuela via ship to Iran. That's a perfect way to attack Venezuela and claim because they were helping with weapon systems. Well, of course, and here we go with the uh, phony intelligence, which, I again, uh, I reiterate that the, that is the neocon stock and trade. False intelligence, focus intelligence, forged documents. Uh, we saw it in, uh, with the war in Iraq, and we're seeing it play out uh, all over again. What's the time frame uh, on an Iran strike? Well, I, I, I said in 2004 uh, there were plans uh, 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 to try to do it before the, uh, the, the November election. I, I think we're looking at electioneering politics. And what better way to rally support for the White House than to have a war with Iran in, say, early October. We'll keep watching it. Thanks for your help. WayneMadsonReport.com. Wayne, we'll talk to you again soon.